Hi, good day. This is Michael with Icon Assist. Today we'll be doing a walkthrough of focus stacking using the Shutterstream or Shutterstream 360 product photography software. Um, I have my camera connected via USB. Um, just to note here, I am shooting with a macro lens. Uh, when doing focus stacking, you're probably shooting small objects using a macro lens. Um, I'm working with a Canon 100mm macro with a Canon Rebel T6 camera. Uh, Connected via USB, and we have an enabled a live view of what our camera sees. Uh, that was my hand going back and forth in front of the camera here. Um, obviously, as we can see on the screen here, I've placed a ring um, in front of my camera, and I've lit it correctly, and we are ready to get started shooting. So um, we'll try to keep this as quick as possible here. Let's just kind of walk through the workflow. Typically, it's live view. And pardon me, I should mention, you do have all your camera controls. So if it's too light or too dark, you can start making your adjustments accordingly. Um, we'll just shoot with, you know, the settings kind of as they are. Pardon me, I'll take my aperture back down to 10. That looks a little bit better and maybe we'll... Okay, so we're going to shoot with these settings right here. Um, the standard workflow after you've optimized your camera settings for your lighting is pre-crop your subject. I've defaulted to crop as a perfect square and then hit your snap button. That's going to capture an image, upload it into the software and show you the result. Now, what we can see here with this image, great quality image. Uh, the problem is obviously with the back of the object, it is very blurry. We can see the focal points probably somewhere about right here. Now, what we're going to want to do is somehow find a way to create an image that is fully in focus from front to back. And that's where we're going to use our focus stacking tool. So let me just delete this image here and we will get started with a fresh thumbnail gallery with no images in it. And I will re-enable my live view and we're going to open up the focus stacking option. So right now, if we hit the left click on snap, it's going to take a single image. If we right click on snap, we can choose focus stacking. Now that's going to toggle this button to any time that we left click on it, it's going to shoot a set of images um, based on user preference um, for focus stacking. Now, before we get into that, what I want to do is click the three little dot icon right here, and that's going to bring up my focus stacking options. Let me just move that to the left side of the screen here. So you can see we have our camera settings window open as well as our focus stacking windows open. I would suggest to have both these open because we will be using kind of both interchangeably. So the way that focus stacking is going to work here is we're going to use the camera lens. So it's actually going to talk to the camera via the software saying adjust the lens focal point and take a sequence of images as the focal point is adjusting to try to shoot a fully in focused image. Um, what we want to do here is choose a start and an end point for, um, for our object. And to get started with that, what we're going to do is we have our live view zoom, as you can see right here in our camera settings window. If you right click on your screen anywhere, that's going to change the one to one viewfinder so that if instead of just live view zoom on fit, I want to go 10 X, you're going to see it's going to zoom in nice and up close for me. And what I can do here is, and pardon me, you're going to see some shaking here. The table that I'm working with is pretty wobbly. So I can adjust my focal points near and far using these mouse clicks. Um, if need be, I can also do that in the focus stacking window, as we can see here. And essentially in this first step, we want to choose the front of the object as the starting focal point. So everything looks pretty good there. I'm going to say start or the set the focus start point. And let me just zoom back out and view my um, live view at one to one here. Now what we want to do is adjust to bring the back of the ring into focus. And to do so, what I want to do is using our focus stacking page here, we can start to make adjustments via mouse clicks. And you're going to see here that it's bringing the back of the object back into focus. The other thing I should mention here, and I should have probably mentioned this earlier, is that these are adjustable. So instead of 10 here, if I want to make it move a larger increment, I can actually edit that and say, okay, let's make it 20 or whatever number we want to do inside of here. So we'll stick with 10 and obviously um, we're going to try to bring our ring back into focus here at the back of it. I'm also going to move my one to one viewfinder. So I'm just going to click down here. And as we're getting close to our object, what we're going to do is zoom back in to view it nice and up close. And we can see there's a little marking on the silver here. Um, that's going to allow us to just kind of, you know, use a reference point to ensure that it 
it is in focus. So it looks like we've done a good job at um, kind of bringing the back of the ring into focus here. Let me just zoom out of that one-to-one -one view. And I'm going to choose that as my focus end point. So now we've chosen our start or end point. Our last step that we want to do is choose the number of frames that we want to shoot for the entire image set. So that's going to be under number of frames. You can choose, you know, as little as two all the way up to infinite if need be. Um, obviously, we're not going to do that. I would probably say probably usually between three and five is a kind of a good frame of reference. If you are shooting 360 product photography, which this feature will work for 360 product photography as well. Um, the more frames that you're shooting, the longer the whole process is going to take. So I'd probably say maybe stick to probably three or four images max for 360 product photography. For the purpose of this demo, we're going to use five. And what it shows right here, size is 20. So essentially from the front of the object where we chose their starting focal point to the back, that was 100 total steps. So, and basically what it says is I've moved a hundred steps from the front to the back and we're taking five images. So in between each image, it's going to move the focal depth 20 steps. And that's just automatically calculated based on your start point, your end point, how much you're moving the actual uh, focus distance, as well as your number of frames. Now, our last step is our processing. Um, I'm going to say auto stack my image set. So... Uh, if that wasn't selected, it would just take five images and the process would be done. Then it would be up to us to go ahead and put those five images together somehow, some way. Um, you could do that, but what I want to do is auto stack the image set, meaning that after it shot the five images, it's going to make a single file for me. The other thing that I want to do just to keep things nice and easy is I don't want all five individual frames. I just want after I hit start one single image that's fully in focus from front to back. So I'm going to say discard the individual frames. And then the last thing that you're going to see here is the render settings. Users who have the focus stacking plugin will have full control for choosing their render settings. Uh, they can use a render profile that would be set in the editing area under the focus stacking button. They can use manual rendering, um, which you can see a bunch of options here, or else you can use our default render settings. I'm not going to dive into all the manual settings that users can kind of play around with, but... Uh, it's explained very well in our user guide. Um, default render settings is going to work well for 90% of your objects. So, and if you're, you know, a beginner or, you know, intermediate photographer, um, I would say use default render settings 100% of the time. Now, once we're ready to go, I'm just going to hit OK here. And what that just did was basically it's going to keep those settings inside of the software for us until we go ahead and edit them again. So anytime that I hit the focus stacking button, it's going to use those exact settings. So to get started, let me just left click focus stack. And that is going to move my lens back to position one. That was at the start of the object, as we could see happening in the live view there. And it will start the image capture sequence. Again, it's shooting a total of five images. And then the very last step will be to take all those five images and put them together. And as we can see here, again, it discarded the individual frames. And as we can see, our image, very high quality image with everything in focus from front to back. Uh, one thing I should point out here is this little diagonal line going across my product. Um, that's just because I am working with a... Um, I've not entered my activation code for the focus stacking plugin. If you've entered your activation code, you will not see any sort of diagonal line going across your object. So that is the focus stacking process. Um, if you have any questions, um, our team is available to help. Um, again, the software is called Shutterstream and or Shutterstream 360 product photography software and focus stacking is available for both still imaging and 360 product photography. Thank you very much.